All right, video on the volume of a pyramid. Uh, these particular pyramids, just like they were in our last video, are a square at the bottom. So if we think about you know, this right here, not a very good drawing by me, but it's a square, all the sides are the same. So this is S, and over here is S, and right back here is S. All right, so that's kind of confusing with all those arrows and stuff, so I'll just kind of keep it like I had it. But uh, a couple things here, uh, it's similar, kind of similar to our surface area pyramid uh, where we use the slant height, if you remember. The slant height goes down the sort of the outside of the pyramid. So if it starts at the apex and kind of goes right down here to the middle of the side. Uh, but this volume formula actually only asks us about height, which is the distance from the apex to the middle of the floor. All right, and these these pyramids are not only square based, but they're standing straight up to the right. All right, they're standing straight up. Sometimes you see pyramids that are what we call oblique, and these are the pyramids that are kind of like tilted a little bit, which are it's tough to draw, but um, these right, these right uh, square base pyramids are really simple to think about. And when we get to our last example, you'll see that we're going to make the same connection that we did in our surface area one with the Egyptian pyramids. But in any event, all you want to do for the volume of this thing is take the area of the base, take the area of this square, which is side times side, so it's S times S, so that's right here side times side, multiply it by the height, which is right here, and then divide it by three, or multiply it by a third. So it's very similar to, if you think about it, the volume of a rectangular prism. The rectangular prism volume was simply length times width times height. Well, if the, both the length and the width were the same, then that's just S squared times height. So all that is is all we're doing now is taking a third of that, basically. Uh, and if you think about it, it's really kind of cool to make connections between a right cone, excuse me, a right cylinder, a right cone, because this is pi r squared h, and this is a third of that. Well, similarly, if we have, if I were to draw a sort of a rectangular prism standing up like this where like I said the the uh, length and the width are the same so this is S and S and this is H <clears throat> well that volume would be would be S times S times H well a pyramid a square base pyramid is S times S times H divided by 3 all right, so it's kind of a nice little connection there. But anyway, let's go on to a couple examples here. Number one, trying to find the volume of this. It's one third times the area of the base times the height. And in this particular example, we are given that the base is uh, has a side length of 13 and the height is 14. So that's pretty simple. There's no pi involved here because remember, we only use pi for circular things like spheres, cylinders, and cones. So here we're going to take 169 times a third times uh, 14. And we get our answer of, let's see, 788.667. That's a cubic measurement. Remember, volume is always cubic. So it's cubic inches. That's Again, and if we think about, I've, I've mentioned this a thousand times, but if we think about what volume actually means, that would be the amount of stuff on the inside. So think liquid, think air, think you know anything else that you could fit inside of a pyramid like this. Maybe uh, you know popcorn or something. I don't know. But you hopefully you understand that volume is inside. Number two, one third times s squared times h. In this case. H is unknown. H goes from here down to the center. Let me draw that a little different color. It goes from the apex down to the center of the floor. In this 
particular example, we don't know that. So what we need to do is form a little right triangle right here. All right, the thing that we do know is called the slant height. All right, the slant height goes down the edge of the pyramid. All right, so the slant height is given to us and what we need to do is draw a little diagram off to the side where we have H37 and this distance down here is not 26 but it's half of that right it would be half of 26 so that's 13 so in our Pythagorean theorem it's H squared plus 13 squared equals 37 squared so we simply solve that and let's see 37 squared is 1369 and we're going to subtract we get h squared is equal to 1200 and take the square root of that and you get 34 h is equal to 34.641 millimeters so there's your height your side of course is 26 so you just plug that stuff in and you're good to go 26 squared times that's 7805 alright so the key for these problems is understanding that there's a huge difference there's a huge difference between the height, which would go right down the center. If this were like a solid pyramid, you wouldn't, be, wouldn't even be able to see the height. But the height intersects with the base right in the middle. So you're always going to be dividing this side length in half to get this distance. Uh, there's a huge difference between the height and the slant height. The slant height is outside. It's on the surface, which is why we used it for surface area, whereas the height is inside, which is why we use it for volume. All right, last one here is some pyramid stuff. If you watched my other video on surface area of these pyramids, you saw this same, this same problem. All right, so the problem is we're looking at these pyramids in Egypt, right? We have pyramids that are just about perfect square right pyramids. All right, they're just about as perfect as we could probably build them today, and they were built almost 5,000 years ago. So it's a pretty impressive thing. And the height of the pyramid, and believe it or not, this I think this one in the back is actually a little bit bigger. This is called Khufu back here. Whereas this one in the front is, it looks bigger in the picture, but I think it's actually smaller in real life. Uh, I could be wrong about that, but the height of that is 455 feet. Whereas it used to be like a little bit higher, but uh, erosion and uh, looting and stuff people have actually taken taken outside layer off this thing over time and it's kind of uh, the outside layer was I think made out of limestone which is pretty it's a pretty light uh, fragile stone it's also more valuable than these base stones so people stole them and uh, weather has kind of taken them away over time but anyway the new height of the pyramid is 455 feet and I also give you the fact that if you were to kind of stand right here, if you were to go visit these pyramids and walk around them, the perimeter of this thing is 3,024 feet. So that would be the distance that it would take you to walk around the pyramids. And that's really the key for understanding the length of each side. Each side is 756 feet. The way I got that was I took 30, uh, 3,024, there are four sides, they're all the same, so divide it by four. So each side length is 756 feet. All right, so we know that the volume of a pyramid, a square-based pyramid, is side times side times the height. So the side is 756, square that, multiply it by 455. That should give you the volume of the Great Pyramid of Khufu. And if you do that, I think you get 80, about 86 million, 682, 960 cubic feet. Let me check that again just to make sure that I didn't do it incorrectly. 
Yeah, it looks pretty good. All right, that's a pretty that's that's the correct answer to the question. What's the volume of the Great Pyramid today? Right, and then I also kind of thought to myself, all right, well, what's a what's a better question? What's a deeper question? If we know the volume of this thing is about eighty six and a half million, and people have calculated over the years that there are about two point five million stones in the pyramid. So my question was, generally speaking, what's the size, what are the dimensions of each stone? Now every stone wasn't the same because they used different stones at different points in the pyramid. Uh, in other words, like the, generally speaking, the, the, the stones here on the outside need to be a little bit stronger and bigger than the stones at the top because most of the, the whole weight of the pyramid is actually held by these stones at the bottom. So these stones at the top may have been a little bit smaller, especially considering they had to carry them up higher and they didn't have any machinery. So these little stones up here were probably smaller than these stones up here. And in the middle of these pyramids, there are all sorts of tombs and, and tunnels and things, and these big caverns, right? They were, these pyramids are basically like designed to be um, uh, not gravestones, but like a place where you would like bury the king, right? And this this King Khufu was was the main leader, the main um, person that was that this was built for, all right? So anyway, there's a lot of space in the middle that wasn't actually filled up by stones. But if we kind of neglect all that, because in the general scheme of things, that all those little tunnels and and caverns and things, they're not really making up a huge huge part of the overall volume of this pyramid and we'll also just kind of take the average size of each stone and if we think about that let's say, let's say each stone was was a rectangular prism and if the whole volume the total volume was was right here and there were 2.5 million stones each stone approximately had a volume of what? Well, let's think. 86.682 million divided by 2.5 million. So each stone had a volume, which did some division there, of about 34.673 cubic feet. So then that, that's pretty interesting, right? And they generally knew how heavy the, the stones were. They said they were each one about 2.5 tons. But uh, I think a better question is, what's the general dimension? How big was each stone approximately? And that's what I kind of want to think about right now. And I'm just kind of guessing here. I don't really know this for sure, but I think it's kind of interesting to think about. If each stone has a volume of 34.6 cubic feet, we can probably assume that each stone was uh, was definitely not as tall as it was wide. Now I have no idea, I've uh, obviously never been there, but let's say that each stone was one foot tall. I mean, maybe it was closer to two, I don't know. But let's say it was one foot tall. And uh, we can also maybe say that each stone was probably maybe around like three feet deep, something like that. I have no idea, but I'm guessing. So that would mean that each stone is how wide? Well, it would be, let's call that the L. It would be volume is equal to L times W times H. So it's L times three times one. And the volume I already gave you is 34.67. So that's three times L, three times one is three times L. So we're talking 34.67 divided by three. So maybe each stone was about 11 and a half feet wide or long. And that's pretty impressive. Um, but anyway, uh, there's kind of an interesting little uh, application problem that you can sort of think about. And you know, most of these numbers up here, I, I research and are, are, are correct, but I could be wrong about these because I'm just kind of guessing. Right? I know that there were, there were scientists know that there were about 
2.5 million stones in the whole thing. We calculated this volume to be fairly accurate. Um, but again, there are some variations and stuff of the of each pyramid and stuff. And um, But anyway, I think it's kind of a fun thing to think about.